Hi, I'm Chloe, and welcome to my vlog on being, uh, reflecting on being an innovative practitioner. Today we'll be looking at using academic research that covers being innovative and using technology in the classroom um, and reflecting on uh, being innovative um, and how using technology um, is actually easy uh, for me in particular but also a struggle for others. Um, and then finally how I'm meeting and working towards the professional standards that cover being innovative and using technology. <clears throat> so the reflective model that I'll be using is by Raphael et al, um, looking at what, so what, and now what. Um, what meaning, what happened, uh, what were your feelings, what actions did I take and what was good about the experience, and so what, what have I learned, what does this mean to me, what does this mean to others, um, and what knowledge can I bring to the situation, and now what, meaning the action plan you're going to take um, you've reflected on the situation, now let's put some action plans in place in order for the mistakes and problems not to occur again. So I'm going to show you a short video that talks about a lobster and a lobster shell in, response, in relation to stress, but I feel actually this can relate to reflection um, and how feeling uncomfortable after a situation and reflecting on it. You can pause this video and go over and have a look at it and then come back and I'll continue. <clears throat> so welcome back. Um, although this video talks about stress, I can very much relate that actually this relates to reflecting um, and so, sort of changing oneself and developing your skills and feeling uncomfortable. I feel if you're too comfortable and finding things easy, I don't think you're not progressing and not moving forward. Um, I feel that many of my many uh, teachers, my peers, myself, um, and also students, and I think everybody in general um, must learn this growth mindset behaviour. Um, come out of your comfort zone in order to grow and learn and develop skills to help on your journey. Um, and I've looked back on many of my experiences and I've learned the most from those that were the toughest, the ones that I shudder to think about, um, make me upset or uneasy. But I also learned a lot from the from the great times, um, from having a fantastic collaborative session with other people and being in an environment where learning was fun. And um, that's one of the reflective aspects I think we tend to forget the good bits and um, dwelling mainly on the bad things. <clears throat> so I move on to being innovative. Um, it's about creating products that feature new, uh, advanced or original methods, being creative and coming up with new ideas that can stem from original ideas and um, already already come to pass or something completely new. Um, but however, this does not necessarily mean using technology uh, for every lesson or a lesson that you want to do something fun and different in. Um, you can use everyday objects to create <clears throat> um, your, your activities, uh, create games, um, and then you can actually use these in several contexts. Um, which help develop and keep students engaged. Um, so, for example, Ex Libris is a game of first binds and last words, which is um, the cards take a famous book and they have the author and the publication date and the title and just a quick synopsis of the book. And on the other side, they have the first line of the book and the last line of the book. And in that middle bit, you can do so much with that. So in this context, I very much predominantly focus on creative arts uh, departments. Um, but you could actually use these in other departments if you wanted to. I think you could probably create something outside um, of the creative arts industry. Just thinking and creating a tool that is able to be transmitted into other contexts. Um, and using something like this to enable group work and um, also individual work and then having a, a, a feedback afterwards, uh, seeing what you've created, having some feedback. So doing some formal um, assessment from your the, from the students, um, classmates and also um, from their teachers. And also another example is Jenga, having just a Jenga blocks and putting questions on there 
or um, terminology um, or anything really put something on there that the students can play a game with but also get them to think as a revision exercise or a recap um, exercise so not necessarily in this instance there's two examples where technology isn't used but can be used for learning and developing skills and also creating a form of assessment so technology um, for some teachers they may prefer using objects some would rather um, not use technology to conduct a task or conduct formative assessment. Um, however, with the progression of technology, I feel we as teachers should promote IT skills uh, and use technology effectively and efficiently. Um, I know that there are many of my fellow peers who would rather go back to the Stone Age and go write on a uh, blackboard than touch technology. Um, I can see why that technology can be scary. Um, it's the fear of doing something wrong. They might press something and it messes up. It, they try to do something and it doesn't want, do what it wants it to do. And the overwhelming sort of jargon that comes with technology, all the different terminology that gets lost in translation. Um, the FALTAG report and the AQA report touch upon this, uh, that using technology in education, because technology is everywhere now, um, all bi businesses use it, so if you want your students to go out in the real world, more than likely their business is going to use technology in some form or another, and must be able to use and have the tools and skills to use that. Um, and it's in every pocket of, of every student, which Gilbert um, and Britland I've also noticed in students' use of smartphone applications and using um, using that tool, as a teacher using that tool as a learning tool, as an engaging and assessment tool uh, in order to do activities. Um, and sort of myself and other pe and my other peers and many people feel, and even Butcher and Fabian McLean also agree, that using tablets rather than computers is actually simpler to use. Um, you've got less complicated buttons to press and the compatibility to collaborate and access data and documents anywhere and it's portable. Um, so I think that choosing what technology you want to use that you're comfortable with but also coming out of your comfort zone and using something different also helps. But I think tablets are a great starting point and actually would be great to use whatever technology you can use because there are applications that can cross to different devices which is great um, there's a youtube video where a baby is using a tablet um, and uses hand gestures to move things on the screen and open things up when was given a magazine nothing works it didn't it didn't do what it wanted to do so you can pause this video and go have a look at that and then come back and we'll continue Hi, welcome back. So, <clears throat> I feel like we're dealing with the generation um, that are given tablets before they can even walk. Uh, I mean, that's something that doesn't need negativity at all. I think it needs some discussion about. Um, eventually, we will be dealing with kids who will more than likely uh, know how to solve some of the IT issues that we may face when using technology in the classroom. So, I say let's come out of our comfort zones. Let's go and give things a go. Um, and Mackansky and Brock in 2013 discusses how to do this and where to go to get support for integrated technology into your classrooms for the support of your faculties and the support um, of the departments of uh, schools and colleges, the, the technological um, services that are available to you. But for me, technology comes quite naturally. Um, I think I have a this sort of fearlessness for technology, if I can say that. Um, I just figured things out. I think I'm part of the generation um, that pressed everything, just give everything a go and see what happens um, and if things get fixed or broken and we'll just figure it out. Um, now, nevertheless, I have faced issues um, that have stumped me, but I've quite solved them easily um, by using Google effectively, looking on some forums, um, asking those in IT to help me, going on to the online community. Um, and look at YouTube videos where someone gives you a step-by-step -step guide um, of how to solve something or use something. 
Uh, Fisher et al. in 2014 explains that learning is more effective um, when collaborating, um, which is absolutely true. Um, you learn more when you suss things out together. Recently, um, we were trying to set up a website and um, trying to get um, submenus, and we figured some things out on our own and together, and we all shared that knowledge. It was a really successful session. Um, but there will be a day when technology will fail me um, and I will not know how to solve it. Even through Google or YouTube, um, I may be like stumped. So that's when that day it comes, I'll let you know. Um, but there is a time when technology isn't needed in the classroom. Uh, Britland and Farlane also discuss when not to use technology and to think about what it is you want your students to do um, in terms of doing an exercise before trying to fit it into a te technological exercise so do, doing a game where you have objects where you have physical copies of things are fantastic ways of not integrating technology too much um <clears throat> so for me the the innovative element should be steering away from technology and um, i do a lot of delivery um, so I think of all physical sources, trying to get the information off the PowerPoint into my students' hands, um, more of a physical source for my students to use. <clears throat> but on the course that I do, um, which is predominantly technologies, film studies, um, and of course we use a lot of technology, so um, they should be able to benefit from using technology in the classroom when we're not on the computers, um, using tablets, for an exercise, say, um, <clears throat> if you sell us in one lesson, um, but using an application such as Nearpod uh, to assess and engage and see how much learning is taking place, um, I'll just have to give it a go. Um, I've talked about it, which is a brilliant thing, uh, but please see my Nearpod Innovative Resource blog for more information on that. Uh, moving on to <clears throat> the professional standards, uh, professional values and attributes. I found that using technology doesn't necessarily cover all the needs of my students. There's something physical they can draw on, interact with. It's a lot easier to engage and learn. Um, some of my students will prefer copies of PowerPoint. Um, so in my sessions we do 30 to 45 minutes of delivery and then the rest of the, rest of the lesson is just typing up on computers what they did in class and a bit of research. Um, However, if they if I've done a bit of delivery, they may have forgotten what I've said and what was discussed. So a copy of the PowerPoint would help them remember. Um, along with like a handout with short bullet points of what I want them to write and what they need to cover. Um, so I know that when I come to assess them, they've covered everything that I need them to do, meeting all those learning outcomes. Um, so for example, um, if we talk about advertising, give them physical examples of advertisements which happened in one of the, one of the sessions and um, give them articles and pieces of work where in groups they discussed it and then shared what they found out with the rest of the class. Um, <clears throat> professional knowledge and understanding. I have always constantly updated my knowledge in my subject area um, that comes very naturally to me. I'm always seeking out um, new technologies, um, new apps, new applications. Um, I'm trying to keep up with uh, film and TV shows that, that are produced and naturally analysing them and researching more into them um, are based around those media contexts. Um, <clears throat> but also my professional skills, I'm constantly promoting technology to my students. I feel, which I've spoken about a lot already, that technology is not a huge issue for me. Um, it's just these little problems with very quick solutions. But as I said, I'm sure one day I will find a situation where technology isn't working, I actually don't or can't think of a solution. Um, and I'm also promoting technology for my students in order for them to be ready for the real world now that our world is very much dominantly like around technology. <clears throat> so, here are the references that I've used throughout the uh, presentation, and I hope that you have also learned something, um, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and i will see you all next time bye